program will cover the basics of the fukushima accident and how radioactive fallout affects components related to airlines and infrastructure we will present a list of compelling evidence that we believe shows a correlation to recent accidents and emergencies in the aviation industry a more detailed list explanation and historic data will be published on the internet following this interview it is our hope that fukushima researchers radiation experts material science specialists engineers pilots flight crews and aviation mechanics will find this information interesting and help add to this growing body of evidence with their own observations and discussions dr loren murray is an atmospheric fallout expert and has interviewed extensively about the fukushima accident and its effects on the health of downwinders marine life and mutations in plants animals and people she is a depleted uranium expert and appeared in the documentary beyond treason with former u.s army radiation health specialist dr douglas roki she was a special guest lecturer for the malaysian war crimes tribunal she has appeared several times on true tv's conspiracy theory with jesse ventura in regards to the great lakes water supply and the health issues surrounding the use of TSA scanners. She has done over 20 speaking tours in Japan and has lectured extensively about the dangers of nuclear power worldwide even prior to the Fukushima accident. She has worked at both Lawrence Livermore and Los Alamos nuclear weapons labs as a geoscientist and on both the waste isolation pilot plant and the Yucca Mountain nu nuclear storage facility prior to becoming a whistleblower. This brief introduction does not do justice to her enormous contributions that she has made, and it is an honor and privilege to work with her again. We will also be joined today by Lorenz Batiste. Loren, would you like to introduce Lorenz? Yes. Lorenz Batiste is an engineer and a journalist. He's from a long line of engineers. He has attended Northeastern University uh, DINFOS, which is the Defense Information School when he was in the Navy for five years, and uh, CSUN, the Cal California State University Northridge, where he got a film degree. He is a practicing engineer, the publisher and editor of LMGNC. It's Loren Murray at Google. LorenMurray.info and on G plus at LM colon GNC. Hi, I'm Larry. <laughs> this is Larry. Lawrence. Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> and yes, we both have the same name. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Mine is the French pronunciation, Loren, and his is the Dutch pronunciation. Lawrence. Lawrence. We would also like to thank Alfred Weber. Rob Soltysik, Heather Stewart, Linda Menzies, Stephen Moyer, Moana Nalu, L. Jacklick, Kevin Blanche, Austin Martin, T.A. Raven Flight, Tico Turner, and Janet Saxon Payek for helping us collect these numerous events that we're going to be talking about today for without their contributions an interview this extensive would not be possible. Loren and Larry, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. We're really happy to be on, and uh, a very special thanks to the contributors you just um, mentioned, because without the citizens' contributions and participation in our research, uh, we wouldn't have nearly as much information to present today. So thank all of you. Everyone has a piece of the puzzle. It's yes. time for us to start putting them together and solving this puzzle. We're going to be talking about some events that we've been following since about the end of February. And at that time, I was uh, working on other aviation-type problems related to radiation in the skies with pilots passing out. And it was a few weeks after I had done an extensive interview interview with Alfred Weber on exopolitics that we had the disappearance of flight 370 and I know Loren you have interviewed extensively on what happened to flight 370 
as well as MH17. And for people who may want more information about both of those plane disappearances and a plane crash, uh, where can they find that information? That's on lorenmaray.info. And if you uh, go to the bottom of the home page, you will find them listed. Click on the link and it takes you to the story. And Flight 370, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 that crashed in early March. And actually, it was shot down by the U.S. Navy. And um, it crashed in Singapore airspace, which gave MI6 and the CIA uh, control over the investigation. So they covered it up. And uh, the, the Flight 17... Uh, which was also a missile attack on a commercial airline. These were both described in Project Northwoods, and uh, that was uh, uh, thought up, dreamed up in the 60s or 70s by the Joint Chiefs in the Pentagon, if you can believe that. And they are the bookends of Obama's pivot to Asia. Yeah, in fact, uh, that was the late 50s, early 60s that they started floating these ideas, the object being to false flag utilizing civilian aircraft. The object of that being to pin the blame on your opponent, therefore freeing you to act against them because public opinion is following your lead which is the definition of a false flag. Well, I've seen both of those interviews that you did, Loren, and they are absolutely stunning. In fact, the, the Flight 370 interview, I think I've, I've watched three times. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was really amazing. I, I learned so much just from that one incident. But the incident... There was a lot to learn, believe me. <laughs> I've never covered anything like that before, and it's just absolutely mesmerizing. You can't believe it's happening. You can't believe it was deliberately done, and by the Navy both times. We'll believe it, because they conceived that program. Well, the incidents that we're going to be talking about today break down into the, the following plane problems, and... Loren and I had started really closely paying attention to this around the three-year anniversary of the Fukushima disaster. And we both have done extensive interviews on that disaster and health effects and the effects on the ocean. Um, and, and there's some excellent articles that Loren has up on her website about that that go into more detail. And we're learning more all the time. But what we're going to talk about today is specifically what evidence there may, that we may have that may correlate to metal fatigue and other structural abnormalities happening to planes that are flying through radioactive air. And I, I kept kind of a, a running um, tab just on all the different incidents, and, and this was the breakdown when I went through and updated this list today. Windshields cracking or falling off the cockpit cross tubes breaking on helicopters when they land, oil pressure drops, in fact we've had three of those I think in the last three days, melting batteries, hydraulic yeah. faults, mm -hmm. panels falling off planes, failures of tail rotors on helicopters, electrical generator failures, issues with nose gear or landing gear, small planes crashing after pilots are passing out or just never reaching their destination. I think we've had three or four of those just in the last week. Small planes that are going into a dead spin and crashing without even contacting flight control or a, having a squawk emergency. Engines catching fire, engines failing, explosions or loud noises, strange smells and smoke, forcing emergency landings, failure of fluid power systems, cabin depressurization, we've had a couple of those in the last few days, de-icing systems that are kicking on mid-flight, metal particles that are being found in failed engine filters, oh. 
loud bangs and flames that are happening in otherwise operating engines, helicopters and small planes that are experiencing catastrophic losses of power, wings that are partially detaching from planes. Believe it or not, we actually have video of that. Um, malfunctioning onboard computers and deployment of emergency slides inside planes during flight and water pipes breaking yeah. flooding planes during flight. That's a sample of what we're going to be talking about tonight based on the events that we have collected since the third year anniversary of the Fukushima disaster. So we'd like to start with some basic information and we have 10 talking points that, um, that we've put together to kind of break down and lay out the research that we've been doing for the last seven and a half months. Larry, would you like to start with the talking points? Oh, well, what we're looking at is indicators. And if you think of it in those terms, then the real overlying thing that we're looking for is entropy and rates of entropy, entropy being the inevitable breakdown of compounds. It's, it's quite natural. Rust is a, a demonstration of it. So the next thing you look for for an indicator is the speed at which it's occurring. Now, I recall vividly when you and Loren were having a discussion one evening. I was working on some video, I believe, at the time. And uh, the conversation came around to the number of unusual aircraft incidences that were occurring. And I just kind of piped in, well, you know, um, radiation, it does crystallize metal. And we've been off to the races ever since. Mm -hmm. Bigner has become one of the major indicators. And the reason why is because it is universal. It doesn't just affect metal. It affects everything. Including Metal. humans. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Including us. So when we're watching for rates of entropy, we can watch for them in other areas as well. In fact, university newspapers are printing a lot more of the uh, notices of funerals uh, for students that are, you know, they're in their 20s and they're not dying in automobile accidents or motorcycle accidents. They're just dropping over of things you normally think of people dying of in their 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. That's entropy. Okay, what we're looking at is the effects of the radiation on metal. So what you look at are critical points. Now, one of the real big ones that you brought up that was where oil pressure failures are occurring. And that's a pressurized system. That brings a number of other criticalities. You've got finer pieces of metal that are being bent into place in order to crimp some type of a hose closed. Those are very fine. There's a lot of stress on them. There are a lot of areas that are, that are particular candidates for failure in those systems unless you overbuild them to mill spec. And that's done with metal-to-metal -metal joints everywhere. So that's what the airline industry is going to have to do because crimping hydraulics in any other fashion at this point is futile. What you're doing is you are creating a Rube Goldberg machine. It will break spectacularly and before you expect it. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the signal sign and you are free to move around the cabin. We'd like to remind you though, for your safety, please keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you do remain in your seat. If you'd like to read about important health and travel information, you'll find an article in the rear section of your in-flight magazine. 